June 9, 2019, a demonstration of one million people, about one-seventh of the entire Hong Kong population, took place. The formal purpose of the demonstration was to prevent the passage of criminal extradition legislation. Hong Kong citizens believe that if the bill passes, Hong Kong will become a communist country as China's political interference intensifies. Hong Kong citizens' commitment to democracy led to large-scale protests involving more than a quarter of the entire population and is being recorded as the longest-running anti-government protest in the 21st century. So why are the citizens of Hong Kong protesting for such a long time? First, let's take a look at Hong Kong's history. The first time Hong Kong appeared in world history was when Britain started the Opium War with China. In the 19th century, Chinese goods were popularly sold in the West. Chinese tea and silk in particular became a must-have necessity for the British. On the other hand, China, with abundant resources, was not interested in British goods. This led to a serious trade imbalance, with British silver flowing into China. In order to overcome this imbalance, the British purposely supplied opium grown in India to the Chinese. As a result, thousands of Chinese became addicted to opium, shaking up the entire country. Eventually, an opium war broke out between China and Britain, and Britain, with its strong military power, won against China big time. Britain signed the Treaty of Nanjing in 1842, receiving Hong Kong as a colony, along with huge reparations. Although it was only a small port, Hong Kong became Britain's outpost for invading China and grew to be the largest port in the East. Hong Kong, which became a free trade port, opened up a railway under the British system and introduced the British educational system, developing rapidly. In the 1970s, Hong Kong became a global financial center, making rapid economic development. At the same time, China seriously began to prepare for Hong Kong's return as Deng Xiaoping's reforms and opening up began. The purpose was to use Hong Kong as the basis for China's economic growth. In 1982, China negotiated the imminent return of Hong Kong with Britain. The key point was to return Lantau Island along with Hong Kong in 1997 and to apply the One Country, Two System principle for 50 years. The One Country, Two System principle means that Hong Kong will be ruled by the people of Hong Kong and that China would recognize Hong Kong's democratic capitalist system. After returning to China in 1997, Hong Kong, which had been a British colony, became a special administrative district in China. Nevertheless, foreigners recognize Hong Kong as a separate country from China and, in fact, designate Hong Kong as a separate member from China in many international organizations, such as the Olympics. This is based on the one country, two system principle implemented by China at the time of Hong Kong's return. However, after Hu Jintao took office in 2003, China's attitude changed drastically, shifting from the existing attitude of non-interference toward intervention, Hu Jintao stressed the importance of overthrowing the two-system principle and creating one unified China. At the same time, he wanted to incorporate the national security law into the existing basic law to ban protests and political activities against China. In protest, the people of Hong Kong held their first pro-democracy demonstration against the Chinese government in July 2003. However, China, which felt the need to strengthen its dominance over Hong Kong, Taiwan, and other minorities, continued to interfere with Hong Kong's politics. The intent was to make Hong Kong one with China along with Taiwan. To express their opposition, in 2009 and 2012, pro-democracy demonstrations sprang up in Hong Kong. In 2014, a massive demonstration, called the Umbrella Movement, arose. Now, opposition to the criminal extradition bills of 2019 fueled the latest protests by the people of Hong Kong. Currently, the protests are not simply about the opposition to one bill, they're a challenge to the administration's straight line system and a demand for China to withdraw from Hong Kong's politics. They're also the last resort for Hong Kong's hope for democracy, which also influences independence movements in Tibet, Uyghur, and Taiwan. Many 
democratic nations support Hong Kong's pro-democracy protests, but at the same time are keeping an eye on China's reaction. Since China is such a huge producer and consumer in the global economy, any country that provokes China could suffer enormous economic damage. Although China and Britain were the sole negotiators of the Hong Kong Return Agreement, nations such as the U.S. have been seriously criticizing China's Communist Party, while Hong Kong fights for democracy. Will Hong Kong gain its freedom?